Ah, I've got the phantom hair thing going on again. I don't know what's going on. Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. And on this pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things, we are going to talk about many stuffs and many things, including a reading from our good friend Peter Straub's The Throat. I've got my notes here. We're going to do our weekly CV check-in. Uh, see how everybody's doing with all this nonsense. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the response to the video from last week, the midweek video where I was showing that Martin acoustic guitar, get into my uh, kind of renewed guitar journey that I've been going on lately. We are also going to talk about Robert McConnell Folded Flake, and uh, I just recorded that review actually, so that'll be coming up this week. And then we will of course get into hashtag ask stuff and things. I have some questions from you out there. Thank you so much for sending those in. But as I mentioned, let's get into Peter Straub's The Throat, and then we will talk a little bit more about stuff and things. Peter Straub is an award-winning author. He is a really nice guy, and he is a viewer of the Stuff and Things channel and a Patreon supporter, and he has given us permission to read his amazing book, The Throat, every week. And we continue now. <clears throat> I felt safe and whole. The child within me was also safe and whole. He set down his rage and his misery and looked at the world with eyes refreshed. For the second time that day, I knew I wanted more of something. A taste of it was not enough. I knew what I needed. This was the beginning of my drug addiction, which lasted off and on for a little more than a decade. I told myself that I wanted more, more of that bliss, but I think I really wanted to recapture this first experience and have it back entire, for nothing in that decade and a bit ever surpassed it. During the decade, a Millhaven boy, who has much more to do with the story than I do, began his odd, divided life. He lost his mother at the age of five. He had been taught to hate, love, and fear a punishing deity and a sinful world. The boy's name was Fielding Bandelier, but he was known as Fee until, until he was 18. After that, he had many names, at least one for each town where he lived. Under one of these names, he, was he has already appeared in this story. I was in Singapore and, Bam and Bangkok, and Fee Bandelier's various lives were connected to mine only by the name of a record, Blue Rose. Recorded by the tenor saxophonist Glenroy Breakstone in 1955 as a memorial to his pianist, James Treadwell, who had been murdered. Glenroy Breakstone was Millhaven's only great jazz musician, the only one worthy of being mentioned with Lester Young and Wardell Gray and Ben Webster. Glenroy Breakstone could make you see musical phrases turning over in the air. Passionate radiance illuminated those phrases, and as they resolved, they endured in the air like architecture. I could remember Blue Rose note for note from my boyhood, as I demonstrated to myself when I found a copy in Bangkok in 1981, and listened to it again after 21 years in my room upstairs over the flower market. It was on the Prestige label. Tommy Flanagan replaced James Treadwell, the murdered piano player. Side one, these foolish things, but not for me, someone to watch over me, stardust. Side two, it's you or no one, Skylark, my ideal, tis autumn, my romance, blues for James. And there you have it, the end of chapter three. We've gotten through three chapters. Now, obviously, this is not an ideal way to consume a book, uh, little snippets every single week, but what I'm hoping is that you will become intrigued by this and maybe want to go out and read it for yourself. The Throat by Peter Straub. Now, as I mentioned, uh, it's time for our little CV check-in. How's everybody been doing? It's fun to hear every week what you guys have been doing to keep yourselves occupied. Obviously, some people out there are still working, but a lot of us have been kind of shut in. Um, it looks like I'm going to be starting up work full time again next week. And I'm kind of glad, but kind of, it's been kind of nice having time, having free time to work on projects. Uh, as I mentioned, I was getting into guitar a lot again. So it's going to be back to that, that grindstone again, where you never have enough time, but in some ways, working makes me take better advantage of the free time that I do have because it's such a precious commodity. I, I do more within that time probably. So I'll probably be back to work again. Um, how about all you guys? Are things opening up a little bit? Have you still been able to keep yourselves involved, keep yourselves excited, keep yourselves busy? 
Like I mentioned, I was uh, addicted to this video game, Animal Crossing New Horizon. Uh, my fiance as well. We are still playing that quite a bit. Um, I'm trying to limit the time only, you know, maybe an hour a day or thereabouts. Uh, I think my fiance is even playing it a bit more than I am lately. But that'll probably be something that continues to be ongoing and probably something that I'll continue to post on the channel. Some people were asking if I'm going to be getting back to Minecraft at any point, and I'm sure I will at some point. But right now, that's kind of in the zeitgeist, the Animal Crossing game. So we're going to still be talking about that. Other things uh, I just kind of wanted to check in on, have, have Americans out there, have you gotten your stimulus checks? Quote, stimulus checks. Um, are you going to be responsible and save them and do responsible things with them? Or are you planning on doing something fun and frivolous with your check? Um, have you been making any plans? This is one thing that my fiance and I have been having trouble with because <clears throat> last year we went on a vacation. The first vacation I have taken in forever, <laughs> if I could think of like, I hadn't gone, I hadn't taken an actual like fly somewhere vacation in my entire adult life until my fiance and I went to Hawaii last year. And it was such an amazing experience. Um, we got to stay at my aunt and uncle's condo, so we didn't have to pay for room. And it was just amazing and wonderful. And one of the cool things, among many cool things about my fiance is that she will sort of inspire me to do things that I wouldn't necessarily do. And so she basically is saying like, we need to go somewhere every year. And me, I would think, oh, I can't afford it. There's too many other things going on. I just can't do it. But when you have somebody there sort of poking you, you're like, yeah, we could do that. We could make that happen. And so we had decided after we had gone to Hawaii that we wanted to do another vacation the next year. So every single year we'll take a week and go somewhere and we had decided to do Japan but uh, all of this corona uh, can't say that all this stuff has been happening and we're sort of trying to figure out like can we make plans that far in advance I would think that by September of this year it would probably be okay but you don't know for sure so we're sort of debating can we buy tickets or not and I'm just curious what you guys are all doing out there like do you have I'm sure many of you had plans that had to be canceled. I know several people personally who had vacations planned. They just had to, they just couldn't do it. Um, but are you thinking about the future? Are you making plans? Like, are you at all confident that you could buy tickets now to go somewhere, you know, maybe six months down the line? Do you think you'll actually be able to do that? And are you making those kinds of plans? I'm curious to hear that because we're still debating whether or not it's safe or advisable to look into maybe getting tickets to Japan. I don't know, I'm just curious to hear from you all about that. Next, I got a pretty good response from the video I posted last Wednesday about the Martin acoustic guitar that I received. Oh my God, I, I have played guitar off and on since I was 15. I think I was 15 when I got my very first guitar, or no, at 15, I borrowed my dad's acoustic guitar that he had had, and it was horrible, if I remember correctly. Uh, the setup was ridiculous, the action was super high, it was really hard to play, um, and I sort of tried learning on that, and then at around 16, I think, I bought a very cheap Squire Strat, and I played that for a while, and at that time, you know, I was learning Nirvana songs and things like that. And I got kind of some groundwork, but I never really put in the effort and the time to really get good. And then throughout the years, I would play and I would have guitars. But there was a period maybe mm, 10 years ago where I really, really was buckling down again and really getting into it and getting passionate about it. And that persisted for a while, but then for the last, like, three, four, almost five years, I was hardly touching guitar. And I realized how much I missed it when we had moved and I was kind of confined to home and I started playing my guitars again and really, really, or actually my guitar because my acoustic that I had was just 
trashed and didn't really work. Um, my Rickenbacker that I got out, my Rickenbacker, and just realized how much I missed it and how much I loved it. And this acoustic guitar that I had wanted for about 10 years almost, around there, um, I was finally able to get. I mean, there had been times in the past where I had saved up for it and then it couldn't happen because of various situations, circumstances were going on. And so to finally have that in hand, I think you can see a little bit of that in the video. It's such a thing of beauty. I love it so much and I've been playing it like crazy. In fact, we even have a question on hashtag ask stuff and things about the results of me trying to play that um, when I haven't been playing guitar a lot recently. But I've just been in love with this guitar. I just love looking at it. I love touching it, feeling it, playing it, obviously. So because of that, I've been trying to get into... I've, I've been looking up songs and, you know, learning songs, refreshing my memory about different styles and methods and things that you can do. And there have been some blind spots for me musically that I've been trying to sort of get in touch with. And one of those blind spots is like the classic rock, like early 70s stuff. I obviously 60s stuff is way before my time, but I'm pretty well versed in a lot of 60s bands, um, especially British 60s bands. I really got into that kind of stuff for a while. <clears throat> and then the 80s, eh, not really, but obviously 90s I know quite a bit about. But that period of early 70s, like Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd, that everyone swears is amazing, I've never really been, in, been able to get into, and I've been trying to lately because I've been watching a bunch of guitar videos because that's what I'm obsessed with right now, and so many of these dudes on these guitar videos on YouTube are just constantly talking about Pink Floyd, David Gilmore, constantly talking about Jimmy Page and Led Zeppelin. And so I've been trying. I've been trying to listen to this stuff it's really hard for me to get into. And I know many of you out there probably love Led Zeppelin and love Pink Floyd. I just, I, I don't know, man. There's something about Pink Floyd especially where it's kind of this noodling kind of jammy sort of sound where I like songs. I like melodies and I like songs. And I don't necessarily like prog rock. I don't think you would call Pink Floyd prog rock. Maybe you would. I'm not sure. But I'm just curious if you guys out there like Pink Floyd, like which albums are the best. And this is for someone, bear in mind, like I love bands like, you know, in the 60s, the Kinks, the Who, the Stones, the Beatles. Um, I love like post-punk stuff in the 70s. Um, punk stuff. I like a lot of kind of alternative or indie stuff. I love Radiohead. I love The Strokes. So that's sort of my wheelhouse. Um, what might I like as far as Pink Floyd goes? I actually started learning, and it was quite simple to learn, uh, Wish You Were Here on acoustic guitar. I like that song, but then I got that album to try to listen to it, and the first track, the multi-part Shine On You Crazy Diamond, there is saxophone in it. I just, I just can't get into saxophone in pop and or rock music. As I mentioned, I just recorded the review for Robert McConnell, Folded Flake. I'm enjoying a little bit of that right now. You should definitely, definitely check it out because I actually had two weeks to really uh, drill down what I think about this blend and spoilers. I like it quite a bit. So that review will be posting this Wednesday and you should check it out. All right, we have quite a few questions for hashtag ask stuff and things. Remember, if you have a question for me and you would like it answered on the Sunday Stuff and Things, tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things, and I will do my best to answer your questions. Also, if you are a Patreon supporter, you can write to me on there. <clears throat> First, via Patreon, uh, TX underscore sandwich says, I have my Spencerian books coming Thursday. For those of you who don't know, uh, years ago I did a video about how to how I've been attempting to improve my handwriting and I was looking at Spencerian handwriting books. Uh, have you done a video on your recommendation for a good starter set for penmanship? I would like to pick up a good basic pen and paper. Any suggestions? I think if you want to do stuff 
I mean, technically Spencerium would have been done with a dip pen that had a very flexible nib, so you can get a lot of expression out of that nib. You don't necessarily need to do that. If you're gonna be writing all the time and using a sort of Spencerian style of penmanship, um, my best bet or my best recommendation is for you to get a basic Lamy Safari, but then order one of the 1.1 millimeter stub nibs that Lamy makes. They are a direct fit replacement to the normal nib that is in the Lamy Safari. And I love writing with that 1.1 millimeter stub and especially with like Spencerian stuff, it's not exactly what it would be, especially back in the day when people were using this in the 1800s, but you can still get a little bit more of that line variation and expression and it's just a really, it's really good too when you're trying to learn penmanship because the 1.1 millimeter stub sort of forces you to have proper nib alignment. Um, and I really love that nib and I think that pen is reasonably priced and the nib is reasonably priced as well. So check that out. And then paper, just get, just get any like fountain, fountain pen friendly notebook paper and then you can find line guides and stuff for Spencerian online. If you just look up Spencerian line guide, you can find that. Um, you could print those out and practice that way. Next, from Twitter, and, and thank you for the question, TX underscore sandwich. But next, Twitter, Zach at Great White Bart has two questions. Zach says, Bradley, awesome guitar, referring to my Martin Triple O 15 that I showed last week. At the start of 2020, I picked up learning guitar myself, and it's just an absolute blast. The one thing I noticed is how sore my fingers get, even after they have calloused up. Are you experiencing the same after some time off? And his second question, have you got any games in mind for the SAT Plays channel once you finish up Outer Wilds? I wish we had something by From Software coming because watching you get wrecked in those is beyond entertaining. Love the channel, keep up the greatness. Thank you so much, Zach. Um, my fingers, yes, they do get sore. You know, I was still playing guitar off and on, but not enough to really get the nice, leathery, calloused fingertips that you get when you're playing every day. And especially my little pinky, I think does get kind of a, a deep bruise in there, and I'm still playing regardless of that, um, but it hurts, and you just kind of put up with it. It might be good maybe to rest for a couple days, but I don't want to rest for a couple days. Eventually you will develop these just ridiculous pads on the tips of your fingers and also just the the strength in your fingers and your hand will build up to the point where you don't feel as though you're pressing as hard as it seems like you're working right now maybe. Um, so for me the pain would go away if I were playing all the time after a couple months but then if I did do like a super long session, it, I still might get a little soreness or a little pain, but eh, that's just kind of part of it. That's what playing guitar is all about, pain. And as far as your question about games in mind for SAT plays, I'm not sure. Uh, Bloodborne is always lurking in the dark, waiting to pounce. So that's a possibility. I wanted to play uh, Cyberpunk 2077, but that has been delayed. I'm not sure when that's coming out. And so I might have to see if I could pick a game that I could fit in between the end of Outer Wilds and when Cyberpunk comes out. But Outer Wilds is going on a long time. That game just keeps, you unpeel a layer, there's another layer underneath. It just keeps going and going. It's a great game, but it's much longer than I thought it was gonna be. Next, from Tyler at, at, blah, blah, at Tyler Brubaker 20. Tyler says, hey Bradley, I hope you're doing okay. I know that aromatics are not something you enjoy, but do you like the room note of aromatics? Uh, yeah. In fact, that's one of the reasons I first got into pipes when I was like 18, is just smelling. Um, my friend, I had a friend whose dad did like a cherry vanilla kind of blend, and I always thought that smelled really good. And then when I first went into the store and grabbed my first pipe, I just smelled the room note of the pipe that of whatever uh, the owner was was. I think it was like a vanilla apple-y thing or some kind of apple aroma, and I was like, "Ooh, that smells good," and that's why I bought it. Don't end up. I didn't end up liking those, you know, as time went on. But the smell is nice. You can't deny that the smell is pretty nice. Next, from it's ya boy Ted Bradley at Chevrolet of. Uh, Ted says, wear them damn, uh, uh, 
where them damn otters at. Uh, no, he did not add the dam. I added the dam. Sorry, where them otters at. Um, I have not been able to successfully find the otters yet. We had a Sunday stuff and things several weeks back, probably several months back, where I was trying to find these sea otters. Uh, I have not successfully seen them yet. I've taken videos several times of me trying to find them. If I ever do, you guys will know for sure. Uh, and also, joking about the last question, I answered it anyway. Have you tried dried snuff? Me and my father recently got into this. Nothing quite like a nostril full of that. Um, snuff, something that was quite popular in the 18th century. I have, in the past, this was probably like in my early 20s, I think, I just thought it was a funny thing to do or a funny thing to try. It's fine. <laughs> it's not great the next day when you have a nostril full of just like congealed powder. Uh, and it's not, we're not talking about illicit drugs, we're talking about snuff. Um, it's kind of nasty. I, I, I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. But if you're enjoying it, Continue, please. Next, from 1.21 gigawatts, is that a Back to the Future reference? At Ninjatu88993807, uh, Ninjatu asks, Hello, Brad. Could you please use your crazy... Oh, no, he, he's asking for a voice here. Okay. <clears throat> my question is, when cleaning my pipe after a smoke, how meticulous should I be? I remember from one of your how-to videos, you said to get all the little bits of tea off from the sides of the chamber. Some of them seem to get stuck there pretty good. I feel like I shouldn't be scraping them off so hard. Any advice would be appreciated. I know there's probably quite a few spelling and punctuation errors, so have fun with that. Thanks, brother. I didn't notice anything egregious in there. Um, I am pretty meticulous when I clean my pipe. Um, it's basically just the check tool. Scrape it out as well as I can. Uh, pipe cleaner in the stem, pipe cleaner in the top around the bowl. And then I do take a look inside, and if there's any dottle, anything left in there, I might give it another little scrape. Um, you don't need to be super aggressive. Usually I'm able to get everything out just by a good scrape with the check tool and a good go round with the pipe cleaner. But, you know, I, I wouldn't obsess over it, but just try to do as well as you can and you should be fine. And thank you for the question. And now, gang, I think that is it for this Sunday Stuff and Things, except for the best part of the show where we thank, thank our Patreon supporters for their support. Obviously, things are getting tough for people right now, where a lot of people have been forced to stay at home, maybe not making as much money as you are, and I really appreciate the people who have stuck by the channel and are still supporters on Patreon, and I totally understand the people who have had to cancel their subscriptions for now. We'd love to have you back eventually, but I just... More than being disappointed that people have had to drop off, I just want to let it be known that I so much appreciate the time that you spent supporting the channel, and we'd love to have you back. But now we would thank the Patreon supporters who support the channel at $25 or more a month. People like AJ Hogue, Ryan McFadden, MD of the North, Kirk Crompton, Private Eye, Cody Striegler, Ryan Stoffer, Corbin Borbin, and Glenn. And now I would also like to thank the Maniacs, the crazy people who support the channel at $100 a month and who are entitled to a face-to-face, -face, well, computer screen to computer screen conversation with me. People like our good friend Peter Straub and our other good friend Bob McGee. Thank you all so much and thank you all so much for watching. Love having you as a viewer. Uh, love it when you subscribe. Love it when you do the thumbs up thingy on there. That's nice. Sharing the videos too, leaving comments, asking questions for hashtag ask stuff and things. We love it all. Thank you so much. Hope you are all doing well. And until next week, until we meet again, I've been a good friend, Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a pleasant Sunday Stuff and Things. I'll see you later. <laughs>